All right, guys, welcome back. Good afternoon. My name is Sandy. This is Sawing with Sandy. If you're brand new, welcome aboard. What we just did was get out here with my Skidoo Scandic that I just picked up not all that long ago, probably six months ago, but just started using it recently. This thing is a great addition to this place in the wintertime. We got tons of snow now here in central Ontario, Canada, but this thing is proven to be light years better than what I had, which was my grand touring with the 15 inch wide track. This thing is a beautiful thing as i like to say 24 inch track on the back there i've been out breaking trails with it left right and center and it's just floating over everything so that uh that's a great addition here anyways just made my way out here with that thing and i brought along my uh, snowmobile sleigh i guess bob sleigh as you guys would have seen most recently i added these things on last time around just some fence posts in order to extend the sides so that I can throw some slab wood in there today because we are going to be cutting with the sawmill. So I figured instead of throwing the slab wood from the sawmill into my slab rack and then picking it apart and throwing it onto the bobsleigh, I just park the bobsleigh here and go right from the sawmill to here. Why am I doing that, you ask? Well, if you've seen my last video, you know exactly why. If not, I'm putting the slabs here so I can go and put it on a trail, which is pretty wet most times of the year, aside from winter. And that way, once spring rolls around, they'll sort of compact as the snow melts and give me a good base to drive the rest of my equipment on. So that's what's here. Uh, getting this thing backed up, I got to tell you, it is an absolute headache with two separate bobsleighs connected with chains. You can't really back this thing up. So I just drove in and then I Mickey Moused it around by disconnecting it by hand. Anyways, one thing I'm going to show you before we head on into the snowmobile, uh, excuse me, into the sawmill shack is this little jobby I rigged up here. And the reason I'm showing you this, some of you out there probably have a snowmobile with a J-hook hitch on the back. This came on my snowmobile, but this doesn't really work well because most of my attachments, get this off there, get off of there. <laughs> Sorry. Most of my attachments have something like this. Uh, and so this does not hook on to there as you guys can see. And so instead of going out and buying a new hitch, I try to be resourceful wherever possible. I welded up this jobber. If you guys have something like a J, hook, J hitch on your machine and you've got something like this on your sleigh, what this does is basically the eyelet goes right on there. And then I've got this hole here, which hooks on to the pin right there. And if I can do this one handed again, you guys see how that works? Slides down in there. See if we can maneuver that. Get in there. Okay, you guys can see how that works. It holds it in place and then these side pieces of metal, it prevents it from articulating in that, in that place. We want this to be fairly straight. And uh, so that allows me to hook her on there, as you guys can see, and it works pretty well. So that's that. Let's move on inside here. If you haven't been around the channel much, you probably haven't seen these sides down before. These are nothing more than basic tarps. And what they do is they provide a little bit of protection from blowing snow. Now I only have it on three sides here. The front side is the biggest, so it's the most exposed to the elements. So I've got this guy here. That's a 20 foot tarp. And then it rolls up and uh, you'll see it in a minute. It tucks up nice and tight up near the top. And then I got the sides on here and all of these are connected with these pulleys up here. And then I can just pull on this rope and you'll see in a few minutes the, uh, the tarps start to roll up. But that is my um, attempt at keeping the elements out. I have thought about putting solid sides on here. I kind of like looking outside and feeling the elements and seeing them when I'm out working. Aside from that, uh, you know, harsh sleet that might blow in on me. But besides that, I like to see what's going on around me so I don't have any solid sides. Maybe in the future I'll put them on, but not for now. Anyways, let's get these sides rolled up. I'm going to cut some wood today and we'll go from there. Welcome back.
Here I'm just running my hand in behind the band wheel just to make sure that the blade itself is fairly flush with the back of that band wheel. That way I know I'm in the ballpark. I can continue on with my tensioning. I'm doing the same on both sides, both band wheels. And once that blade is flush with the back of the band wheel, as I said, I think I'm in, in good shape and I'm tensioning up the blade in order to try it out. And this is a 2017 HM130 model by Woodland Mills. It specifies 25 foot-pounds of torque, and uh, that's what I applied here for tension. Now that I've got the bandsaw blade fully tensioned, I'm just uh, rotating the band wheels by hand, watching to make sure that the blade looks like it's tracking properly. All I'm really going to check is that it's not going to fly off forward or backwards, and then you'll see me one more time. I'm running my hands to make sure the blade is flush with the back of each band wheel. Once I'm confident that's happened, I shut everything down, fire up the sawmill, and I get to cutting. Well guys, as you can see there, I had to do a little bit of sweeping, I had to do a bit of shoveling, I had to set up the boardwalk, put a new blade on, fuel this thing up, etc, etc. So some of the work involved in sawing is actually just getting ready to saw. Not so much just stacking lumber after you've sawn and getting rid of the waste, but actually getting ready to saw, it takes some effort. If you guys live anywhere like I do where we get lots of snow, half the battle sometimes in the winter, if you are going to saw, is getting to the point where you can cut a log. If you guys have a look out here, here's another prime example. Just when I think I'm ready to saw a log because I've got the lumber shed cleared off, I've got the uh, sawmill shed cleared off, I have a look out there at my actual logs I'm going to saw and they're frozen and covered in snow. So in a perfect world I'd probably have a giant shop or barn. I could just move this whole operation inside in the winter. But I think for 99.9% .9 of us the reality is, well, if you live in snow country you're going to be fighting snow in the winter. Anyways, I don't mind it. It is still nice being out here getting some fresh air. And so uh, we'll just keep at her. We'll eventually get a log up here and get her sawn. Back to it.
taking this old bobsleigh you see me putting slabs on, I'm using it to transport the slabs over to a wet area so I can put the slab lid down on that trail to hopefully make that a little bit of fun as well. Check out a recent video of mine to see that. My second favorite drink.
All right, well, I think I gave you guys just about a haircut on the last one there, but we made it. I've got a whole bunch of two by sixes made and came out of that log quite nice. So my two by sixes are an actual six inch wide by an inch and a half thick. I started going inch and a half thick because, um, well, I think the two inches was just a little bit overkill and the odd time I was having to use things like joist hangers. And if you guys know anything about going and buying joist hangers, they come in standard sizes and uh, inch and a half is the industry standard and so that way i can uh, use those with those joist hangers anyways we're going to put those over there in just a second but overall things worked out pretty well probably took me longer to get ready to cut today than it did to actually cut that uh, nice piece of spruce there or i think that was balsam fir uh, came out quite nice you would have seen earlier on the blade actually stopped for a brief second i think i was pushing a bit hard a bit fast it hit a whole bunch of knots and uh, unfortunately it started to uh, started to slip there I'm gonna have to have a look I know my clutch is pretty old on that thing I have had the clutch go before on that and um, I'm gonna have to check just to see what the wear is on that but uh, other than that everything cut good after that initial stop of the blade I didn't have that happen again so I don't know if the uh, the blade slipped on the belts inside the inside the um, the housing there on the band wheels or whether it was the clutch but regardless it worked well after if you guys have a look here this was a great setup this is a real good improvement over what we did last time you guys can see here i just put some of the slab wood right on the, the bobsleigh and i can leave it to whatever length i need and then when i get out to the trail and the trail's like a ways down that way then i can cut it in location and uh, eliminate having all these extra little bits and pieces to deal with on the trip over so overall it's a beautiful afternoon out here one last thing you noticed i did not use the laser on my sawmill it's because of the temperature the temperature of that laser i've been using is rated down to negative 10. it hasn't really been negative 10 for any period of time for quite a while and so it makes it difficult for me to put that into action but uh, i will be using it again as soon as the conditions get a bit warmer although uh judging by what the forecast shows for the long term i don't know when that'll be but the uh, laser i was talking about is right here so we'll get that fired back up before long i've also got some beautiful logs coming as you guys can see right there in fact that one right there is going to be one of the larger ones i've cut in a while so i'm looking forward to that but uh yeah anyways glad you guys all joined me if you have any questions about my sawmill or general setup you guys know where it goes down below do me that big favor as well doesn't cost you a single thing Make sure you subscribe. Give her the old like a See you See all you guys next time. Oh, and one last thing, because I know some of you guys will ask me down in the comments, I do constantly think about this general setup of my sawmill and my lumber shed. That includes thinking about putting a roof over my log deck, but I just haven't got there yet. As you guys can imagine, it's uh, quite an effort just getting any type of structure built, let alone building it in the winter. There's a lot of planning that goes into it. I have to get the trees, have to get them cut into logs, made into lumber, and designed etc etc so i am considering things like that i just haven't got there yet i don't know if i will get there i don't know uh, what the long term looks like but i can tell you things are happening there's something coming as well things are happening and i'll be sure to share it with you guys take care see you next time